What's up everybody? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's coach Ken here. And today we are talking all things how to optimize your Instagram profile. My guess is that if you are here, you not only want to gain more followers, but you probably also want to gain more paying customers. And your Instagram profile setup is going to be a really important part of that because it's the first thing that people land on when they're on your Instagram, where they decide whether or not they want to continue to follow you. And more importantly, if they want to then continue to follow you to then buy your services. So as somebody who's been on social media for the past 11 years now and i've had my coaching companies for the past seven years i will tell you that instagram is an incredible platform and still is to this day to scale your coaching company and to sell your online courses or your online services but you have to think about how you can optimize your profile in a way that calls people in that are directly inside of your niche that you would want to work with, but it also repels people that you maybe don't want to work with. Gaining more followers isn't the name of the game anymore. It's gaining more followers who are gonna be bought into your mission, bought into your vision, and also potentially want to buy into your services. Now, that's not to say that you shouldn't have people on your page who are there for the value, but at the end of the day, if you wanna make a bigger impact on people, you wanna help them at a deeper level and you probably want them to buy your services, your courses, or whatever it is that you might be offering as an online service provider. So let's dive into today's video. I'm gonna give you guys three tips on how to optimize your Instagram profile to get more followers and to get more conversions. Now, first things first, you wanna make it very evident what it is that you do. So if you don't know what your niche is, if you don't know who specifically you help, I want you to go back to this video right here, how to sell your offer. In this video, I talked to you guys about how to niche down, how to understand who your ideal client is and what the labels are and the pain points that your ideal client needs to hear about more in order for you to sell more of your offer. This video is gonna to talk to you a little more about how to actually understand what your offer is and who it's for so that you can build a solid Instagram profile. So if you haven't seen that video, go check that one out first and then come back here. If you already know what your offer is and who you help, then we're in a really good place for you to build up your Instagram profile. So when you know who you help and what you offer, you can make this a part of your name in your Instagram profile. So your profile is essentially more searchable. Now, I'm gonna sound a little bit like a hypocrite here. And the reason is because when Meta came out with Verified, unfortunately, they wouldn't let me change my name on Instagram. So you will see my name is simply just Kendall Strample. What I can't recommend enough is putting what it is exactly that you do. So if you're a health and fitness coach, don't just put health and fitness coach, but put who specifically you help. Maybe you're a postpartum mama coach. Maybe you are a reverse dieting coach. Maybe you help one with PCOS, so you can say PCOS coach. The more specific you can be, the better. This makes your Instagram really searchable. So if someone specifically has an issue or a problem or they have a specific psychographic, it's kind of easy for them because they just go to the Instagram search bar and they type the specific coach that they're looking for. So if you offer something, add more specificity to it. If you say that, hey, I'm a women's weight loss coach, well, ask yourself, what's a real-time example of that? What does that actually look like? and who specifically is gonna be looking for you, what would they type in in order to actually see who they would want to work with? When you figure that out, I would incorporate that as part of your name at the top of your Instagram. Now, the second thing is optimizing the actual bio itself. When you're optimizing your Instagram bio, I cannot express this enough. Make sure that you state exactly who you help, what you help them with, and I always like to kind of have like a subtle brag or something that's personality driven in your bio as well. So you guys will see here on my Instagram profile, I say specifically who I help and what I help them do. I help fitness coaches scale to multiple six to seven figures. You guys can see underneath, I kind of have a subtle brag. My clients have made over $13 million online. So I put that in the second line of my bio. And in the third line of my bio, you guys can see that I have another subtle brag, which is that I scaled two companies to seven figures by the age of 23. And then last but not least, I have a call to action. So I can't recommend this enough. You have who it is that you help and what you help them with. You have some kind of subtle brag or something about your personality. And then you have a subtle call to action at the bottom. So you have a link in your bio. So when you have this, what's really nice is someone can tell, okay, this is the person for me. They help me specifically. They also help me with the outcome I'm looking for. Okay, cool. They have some credibility. They have something about them that I really love about them. And then the call to action actually tells them what to do once they're on your page. So you can see here, my personality is definitely in that last line. I say I have more free shit than most people sell. So I like to give a lot of free value. So when people come to my page immediately, they can be bought into what it is that we do and they can see whether or not I am the best person to help them with scaling their business. So this is a really easy way and an easy formula for you to be able to build your Instagram bio. Think about the first line being who specifically it is that you help, what you help them with. The second thing being some kind of subtle brag, something about you that would be really attractive to your ideal client. And then last but not least, having some kind of call to action. This can be to a Facebook group, this can be to a YouTube video, this can be to a free resource that you might have or an email list. It just depends on what exactly it is, but make sure if you are a coach that you have your application 
in that link as well. And the third and final thing, let's talk about pinned post. I don't see enough people talking about pinned post. I started leveraging pinned posts because let's be real, they're at the top of your page on Instagram. And when people come to your profile, they're usually looking at the first few photos and the first few posts on your page. So I can't recommend this enough, but once you've set up your name, once you've set up your Instagram profile, start thinking about how you can curate content in a way where you can actually build up a pinned post that you want to leave on top of your page. I find a lot of people just put whatever has the most engagement at the top of their Instagram profile. So the minute that someone comes to your page, you can kind of captivate them. They can see who you are, they can see what it is that you do, and they can see if they can follow you. If they make it past the profile picture, if they make it past the name of the Instagram bio, the next thing that they are going to do is your pinned post. I know a lot of people say that it's highlight reels, but based off of the research that I've seen from Instagram, less people are actually likely to click your highlight reel. They're more likely to hit the pinned post on your page. So let's break down what these three posts can look like because you're only able to pin three of them. Now you don't absolutely need to do this, but I recommend doing it. I've actually had a lot of people who've opted into different posts that I've had. I see people consistently liking the posts that are at the top of my profile when they come in. The first one, I want the first one to be some kind of introduction. Now I actually have a reintroduction to myself on my page and I've kept that in my pinned post for a very long time. It might not be there and be active at the time that you watch this video. I might have three different pinned posts, but have something that explains who it is that you are, what it is that you do, and something that's a little more personality driven. I can't express this enough, but I personally love following pages that I go to their profile. I'm like, oh my gosh, this person is a vibe. This person is like the person I want to follow. This person is definitely has got a lot in common with me. And I always like looking at who the person is, not just what they do, and if I actually like their vibe. So having something that's a little more vibey, something that explains who you are, something that's a little more personality driven, doesn't hurt. So this could be an introduction post to who you are, what it is that you do. You could do something like seven facts about me. You could just do a reintroduction, make it something really simple, really fun. It can be a carousel, it can be a reel, or it could just be a photo of you. The second one, I would add a very specific value add that pertains to your offer. So this could be an educational post, this could be a carousel post where you do a swipe through on a how-to. These are always really good because it basically shows somebody that you're educated, it shows somebody what you're educating them on. And also in these posts, you can tend to refer back to your clients. So you could say something like, this is something I helped my client do, this is how we integrate it with my clients. So you're kind of doing this soft selling in the background where you're posting something educational, but you're also kind of bragging a little bit about your offer throughout that. So having something educational always helps Helps. If you have a step-by-step -step formula, or if you have something inside of your courses or your program where you take people through a framework, it's always really nice to talk about the framework and also utilize it in a way that it helps somebody else. Don't just say, hey, this is how we help our clients. Say, hey, this is how we help our clients and this is how you can get started with integrating this. If you wanna work with us on the back end, here's how you can do that. So having that second post that is a value-based post that pertains to your offer is one of the best things that you can do in my opinion, because now people aren't just coming to follow you because they like you, they're also coming to follow you because they see how you educate and they see that you have something to offer. The third thing, so I put something here that is story-based directly related to your services. So what I mean by this is you can share a story of a client testimonial, you can share a story of a client transformation, you can share a story of a piece of work that you've done with a client. I find that when people write about their client testimonials and transformations, it kind of like is just a little bit boring for being honest. So keep it light, keep it fun. I would write a little bit of a story about the transformation, how you came to that conclusion, how you were able to help the client do X, Y, and Z, or how your courses were able to help that person do X, Y, and Z. So these three pin posts give people a really good idea of how you're capable of getting somebody the result that they're looking for, a little bit of education and a little bit of fun sprinkled into the educational post that talks about your offer specifically. And then the third one being you, just talking about you, talking about your personal brand, talking about something that relates to an introduction to you, and things that people can get a really good example of who you are. So take these tips, run with them. So if you guys are looking to break down those pinned posts, if you guys head over to my page, you'll see that I have three pinned posts at the top. And if you guys wanna head over to our business coaching page, you'll see our business coaching page also has three pinned posts at the top as they are pertaining to what I chatted about with you in this video, unless I've changed them at the time. But either way, these are still great ways for you guys to get people to influx your profile, click on those posts and see if they wanna to continue to follow you. So I hope that you guys found this video really helpful. I can't express enough how important it is to have a really awesome Instagram profile, something that not only talks about your services and who you help, but it also shows your vibe, it shows your personality. Sprinkle yourself in there. Don't be afraid to talk about your client results. 
Don't be afraid to talk about your offer, but also don't be afraid to talk about you. People are ultimately coming to your page and if you have value to offer them, that's awesome. There's a lot of people who have value to offer, I'm sure in your niche, what sets you apart? It's simply you being you. So don't be afraid to express yourself. Don't be afraid to post that on your profile. Don't be afraid to introduce yourself and put yourself out there because people are not just following you for your services. They're also following you for you. So I hope you guys found this video super helpful. If you have any questions or any requests on videos, you guys can just leave them down in the comments below, but I will see you guys in the next one.